So far we talked about two different temperatures, the ordinary dry temperature and the wet temperature, but there is a third temperature we need to keep track of, and that's the adiabatic saturation temperature. The adiabatic saturation temperature and the wet temperature are fundamentally different, but for the air water system they happen to have the same numerical value. For the wet temperature, the contact time between the air and the water is re really, really short. So the water content of the air is unchanged by the contact. For the adiabatic saturation temperature, however, the contact time is really long. So the air comes in at one water content and comes out saturated. And when do you get the wet temperature and when do you get, do you get the adiabatic saturation temperature, well, the wet temperature you get when you take a shower, for example, uh, and you have an open door and the, the air is changing, uh, then you get essentially the wet temperature. Or if you take a thermometer and then put some wet cloth on it and then you circle it around, then you get the wet temperature. The adiabatic saturation temperature, that one you get if you, for example, dry something in a dryer, so you have a, a system where you put in hot air and then you have some goods that you want to dry with a wet surface and then you heat that up to the adiabatic saturation temperature, you preheat it and then the air in the dryer as it picks up water from this thing that we dry it will follow the adiabatic saturation line in the Molière diagram and that is essentially the wet temperature line. So how can we tell that these are the same? Well, we can calculate the slope of the wet temperature line. And that's a bit difficult. Uh, in my compendium, I have a whole page with the derivation of that. And you have to make some simplifications. And it looks a bit ugly in the middle. But eventually, eventually we get to the thing that the slope, so delta H divided by delta X, is Cp for water as liquid times the wet temperature. What about uh, the slope for the adiabatic saturation lines? Well, consider this mass balance here. You have air coming in and you have air coming out and then you have water coming in as liquid. To make a mass balance of air is really, really simple. You have air coming in and air going out, so G equals G, nothing happens. But for water, something happens. You have the water content of the air, G times X coming in, but you also have the liquid coming in, and we'll call that L. So G times X plus L equals G times X at the saturation point. So that we can express a difference in X uh, in terms of uh, G and L. Now, the energy balance, you have an enthalpy of the air coming in and you have an enthalpy at the saturation point of the air going out. But what about the enthalpy of the water? Well, we will use uh, the, the relative definition of enthalpy as water as liquid at zero degrees has zero enthalpy. So the enthalpy of the water is the heat capacity of the water times its temperature in degrees Celsius. So LCP times the adiabatic saturation temperature. And note here that the water must come in at the temperature at which the air comes out. And how do you fix that? Well, if you want to measure this, you have to tune uh, the temperature of the water so that you eventually get a steady state where the water has the same temperature as the air coming out. Okay, so the energy balance is G times H of the air coming in plus LCP uh, times the temperature, T adiabatic, and then what comes out the G times the enthalpy at the saturation. And then you, there you can express a difference in enthalpy that has to do with the liquid and, the, and CP and so on. And then you divide the two equations to get delta H divided by delta X and it happens to be Cp times the T adiabatic. So the same kind of slope as you had for the wet temperature lines. So for the air water system, due to the simplifications you can make, 
these lines are essentially identical. They are so identical that we give you only graphs with one of the lines drawn. So in the diagrams we have drawn, like this, there is only one line, and that's the wet temperature line. To show you how different they are or how similar they are, I prepared two special diagrams here. So this is the one for 55 degrees uh, that you also have in the handbook. And I've drawn the wet temperature lines as blue lines, and then after that I've drawn the adiabatic saturation lines as red lines. And you, in the low temperature and low water content uh, part of the diagram, you see that there is no difference. You only see a red line, and that's because I draw the red after drawing the blue. So they become on top of each other. But you see at high temperature uh, and higher water content that there is some difference. And if you instead look at another diagram with up to 200 degrees, you see that there is a difference. And the main difference here is that the slope uh, is constant for the adiabatic saturation lines. Uh, so they are straight lines, while for wet temperature, it's not really straight. So they are a bit bent. Uh, not much, but a little bit. But in the courses I give, uh, the wet temperature line and the adiabatic saturation line, you can pretend that they are the same, even though the, there is a slight difference between the two.